He's probably one of the most recognized high school players in history. The team from Senegal is catching on pretty well after only a couple of years playing basketball. Being seven foot, foot six doesn't hurt. Coming into the game and he got roars when he got up off the bench. Taco Fall has got an eight four wingspan. A size 22 shoe, he's seven five. And this kid. Taco Fall. Taco Fall quite literally wasn't ever hard to notice. He was the tallest player during grade school, high school, college, and during his NBA stint, by far. In fact, Taco is the third tallest NBA player in history behind George Murison and Manute Bol, who were both seven foot seven. You see, back in Senegal, where Taco is originally from, a basketball coach named Ibrahima Ndaye caught wind of this absurdly tall teenager casually bawling with his mates on the streets. At just 15, he was already brushing the clouds at seven feet three inches tall. Taco said himself that he was around six foot five at just age 12, meaning he was as tall as James Harden or a Devin Booker as a preteen. Then at 16, Taco was already taller than Shaquille O'Neal. That's insane. I mean, Taco Fall can dunk without even jumping, but his towering figure was just the height of his NBA career. Forgive the pun, but Taco Fall didn't really make his mark in the league, and what everyone saw as a deadly weapon wasn't put to the best of use. And that's the first stage of this video. So at 16, Coach Ndaye and his crew came and persuaded Taco Fall's mother to allow him to join his basketball academy that promotes young basketball talents, and with the help of the coach, Fall soon found his way to the United States. That's a giant leap from Dakar to the States at just 16, right? Once in Houston, Taco hit the court and trained with the legendary Hakeem Olajuwon. By senior year, he stood at seven foot six. Playing for Jamie's House Charter and Liberty Christian Prep, he was the tallest high school player in the entire country. He eventually moved to Liberty Christian Preparatory School in Tavares, Florida. He averaged 20 points, 15 rebounds, and blocked shots very easily, as you would have guessed, averaging 5.1 per game. In 2015, he committed to the UCF Knights under coach Donnie Jones, and once college life kicked off and Taco played as a center for the UCF Knights, he once went toe-to-toe -to -toe with another Senegalese giant, Mamadou Ndaye, both coming from Dakar, and it was the tallest tip-off and matchup in U.S. college basketball history during a showdown between UCF and University of California, Irvine. By his sophomore year, after Mamadou declared for the 2016 NBA draft, Taco Fall became the tallest player in college basketball. But he wasn't just a human skyscraper, he was the AAC Defensive Player of the Year in 2017. Taco Fall grew to be an efficient player, ranking second nationally in field goal percentage during the 2016-17 season, and finishing with the second highest percentage ever. So was the NBA draft calling in 2017? Yep, but he decided to stick around at UCF. Injuries sidelined him during junior year, but he bounced back in his senior year, leading UCF to the NCAA tournament. Taco's final game in college came against Duke, and it was a heartbreaker, but he dropped 15 points and grabbed six rebounds. Post-college, Taco entered the NBA G League Elite Camp and set records in height, wingspan, and standing reach. His maturity was clearly showing. Yet the 2019 NBA draft came, and surprisingly, he was not picked. But why? Well, let's say if this was five years ago before the draft, he'd be the hottest draft prospect, as he was probably the closest anyone would come to a Yao Ming. But the NBA landscape has evolved into a three-point paradise, leaving the traditional giants a bit stranded. And this takes us to the second part of this video. After an undrafted stint in the 2019 draft, the Boston Celtics came into the picture, signing Taco to a contract on June 21, 2019. So an opportunity came calling. 
Taco Fall made some serious noise during the 2019 NBA Summer League, scoring points and snagging rebounds like he was playing a casual game of pickup. He showed in spurts how disruptive he could be on defensive with his insane length and wingspan. Offensively, though, he never had much of a deep arsenal. He was a big body for teams to keep off the glass. Taco Fall split time between the Celtics and their G League affiliate, Maine Red Claws. The Celtics got Taco on a team-friendly salary, and for an undrafted player, there weren't really too many expectations for him. Taco made his debut at Madison Square Garden against the New York Knicks, and let's just say it was like a skyscraper crashing a rooftop party as the Knicks couldn't meet up with his height. He played for four minutes, scoring four points and grabbing three rebounds, including a standing dunk for good measure. Some fans and pundits argued that Taco Fall had too many limitations, both defensively and offensively. Mobility is everything with a guy that big. Just see the night and day difference in sheer movement between super giants like Taco Fall and Victor Wembanyama. Even though they're both roughly the same height, watch how Wemby is able to fluidly glide his way from point A to point B, driving the ball to the basket, pull up pieces, and footwork. Whereas for Taco, he's got gifts, but was always much more glacial and stocky in movement. Not much pep to his step at all, minimizing his overall effectiveness on offense and especially defense, because his slow foot speed can be a liability in the half court. Unless it was something right at the basket, like a putback or an offensive rebound, Taco always played like he was a bit unsure of his role, even in college. Watch how he set a screen and didn't realize he had a wide open lane, had he just ran to the basket. Basic floor awareness and fundamentals is what ultimately held Taco back. Offensively, Taco was compared to Boban Marjanovic, but it's a shaky comparison. While Boban has a bag of post moves that allows you to funnel your offense through him in the post, Taco Fall is more about finishing dunks. The critics point out that he lacks the craft and finesse that could make him a post threat. Taco could only do a very little on the block with a defender directly in front of him. However, the Celtics seem to be playing the long game. Taco wasn't meant to be a 30 minutes per game player, let's be honest. He was the backup center, as it would be difficult to meet up with the NBA level with his build. In all fairness, it would be difficult for any big player that isn't Yao Ming. And let's be real, aside from the height, no one really expected Taco Fall to be like Yao Ming. Throughout the 2019-2020 season, he logged season highs, blocked shots, and led the Celtics in field goal percentage. But the real show was in the G League with the Red Claws, where Taco became a double-double machine, averaging 12.9 points, 11.1 rebounds, and earning all defensive team honors with three blocks per game. On the 23rd of November 2020, Taco Fall re-signed with the Celtics on another two-way contract for the 2020-21 season. Playing for the Celtics and the Red Claws, he improved in his overall play. His season debut against the Memphis Grizzlies saw him record two points, one rebound, and two blocks in the little time he featured. He dropped a season-high six points against the Orlando Magic on the 15th of January 2021. He also recorded a season-high four blocks in a blowout win over the Orlando Magic again, and almost two weeks later, he grabbed a season-high eight rebounds against the New York Knicks. Taco Fall really stepped up, showing improved conditioning, better court awareness, and even a near three-point jumper. The University of Central Florida product was evolving. But let's keep it real, Taco's best games that season were against the Washington Wizards and Orlando Magic, both of whom were not exactly the cream of the NBA crop that time. Throughout his time at Boston, Taco Fall barely made 30 season appearances for the Celtics, and the next stop on the Taco train was Cleveland. Which brings us to the third part of this video. On the 27th of September 2021, Taco Fall signed with the Cavs in what was a fresh start for the Giant maybe a chance to be involved more, or so he thought. By October 16th, his deal converted to yet another two-way contract with the Cleveland Charge, the Cavs' G League affiliate. He featured more for the Charge, and it wasn't until the 22nd of December that he got his first NBA start for the Cavaliers against, guess who, the Boston Celtics. A homecoming of sorts. But more surprisingly, two weeks later in early January 2022, Taco was waived by the Cavaliers. 
the giant was cut loose, left to ponder his future in the league. Now, some say it takes three seasons to determine if someone's a bust, but Taco Fall was actually never drafted, and there were little expectations, so technically, we can't really say we're too disappointed now, can we? But he's the undrafted underdog, who didn't make his mark even in the multiple opportunities he had. His struggles as a defender due to slow foot speed and lack of agility get highlighted. The league craves perimeter defense, and Taco's size becomes a double-edged sword. His limited offensive game and shooting range add to the challenges. With only two three-point attempts in his NBA slash G League career, he's not the threat beyond the arc that modern basketball demands. But wait, let's dissect some numbers. In 29 NBA games over two seasons, Taco Fall averaged 6.5 minutes, 2.7 points, and nearly a block per game. He's not a scoring machine, but his interior defense is, well, just average, when it really should be elite. So what's the verdict? Is he a G League standard player or a player that can become a valuable asset from the bench? At 27, he might have still had a shot at the NBA, but surprise, surprise, Taco Fall decided to take a detour to China in the summer of 2022, as he signed a one-year contract with the Xinjiang Flying Tigers of the Chinese Basketball Association. Maybe it wasn't too surprising, as after three seasons in the NBA without any positive signs, Taco Fall would have thought it wasn't meant to be. After a year, he signed with another Chinese side, the Nanjing Monkey Kings, where he currently plays. And in good news for Taco, he has seemingly found his niche in a league that isn't nearly as demanding on both ends like the NBA is. And the CBA is a good home for players who are huge and stocky with slow movement given the bigger focus on playing inside and not so much on shooting from the perimeter. At this point, we may not ever see Taco back in the NBA again. But let's face it, can any team actually use him?